<laughs> okay, here we are, self reliance, and this brother's getting. His name is Eric. He's a buddy of mine. Just met him out here, and he is about to get chewed on right here by these dogs over there. And frankly, the irony is not wasted on me. So we're gonna see how this goes, y'all. <laughs> I'm out and about and it seems like it's been forever and a day and oh got my new hat I don't usually wear hats but I got this one on and I'm glad I have it because it's kind of a sunny day out here so here we are at the self-reliance festival and a couple of days ago I had the great distinct pleasure of being able to record not record but to teach a swale class not only with my homestead honey but also with the great Jack Spearco from the survival podcast what a joy, what a joy, what a joy. And what you're seeing here is what, part of what we're gonna talk about. Now, at this Self-Reliance Festival, believe me y'all, it was teeming with every activity imaginable. Awesome people from all over the country, some of them from all over the world. So here's the latest iteration, and then we're gonna show you some of the footage of that. I wanna come over here for a minute and show you what we had. We have an accidental pond here, okay? And William designed in a swale that basically we got a bunch of water on it because the sprinklers that are handling all this were left on. Anyway, it hits this little area right here, which is something of a spillway. So if there's ever too much rain, it spills over the spillway into the pond. If the pond gets too deep, well, it goes into the spillway into the swale. And then out the other way, two inches higher than this spillway is the one that spills down the hill into the other pond, okay? A uh, lot going on here. So what happened during this class is in a, essentially we showed a bunch of people how to put in a guild. So that tree wasn't there a little while ago, okay? Neither were the other ones up and down here. And I'm going to walk over here so you can get a better understanding of it. None of this stuff was in here. So just like we teach at our farm, we basically replicated the very same thing. Now, there are trees, you can see some there, but what you don't see are the nitrogen fixing shrubs. All the other things, the comfrey, which we sell at the website, is all in here. Everything is set and ready to go. We got a seed mix in the spaces in between the trees and stuff. Down in here, you can see this well because the sprinkler was left on. Look at this. This swale is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's a water harvesting ditch on contour. It's seeping into the aquifer eventually. It's also seeping into that mound. So what we had in here was buckwheat and cowpea. We basically took some hedge trimmers, chopped it all down, used it as a mulch. But before that, we put in a seed mix. Then we put in the trees. Then we put in the daffodils. Then we put in the garlic. Then we put in the comfrey. Then we did all that stuff, y'all. Really, really, really cool stuff. And it's such a joy to be able to volunteer my time to do fantastic projects like this. So what we're gonna do this time of year this isn't the ideal time to put in trees and stuff like that, but it'll work. It is the ideal time to teach a class because we were already having a festival. So folks, in the future, we're gonna be doing a whole lot more stuff out here. This is going to be the place, my prediction, where people come all over the country to learn what permaculture is all about. How cool is that? But y'all, it wasn't just about this. This whole weekend wasn't just about this. It's about all these wonderful people you're gonna meet here in a minute. You gotta check them out. They're doing fantastic things. They're doing grand things. They're doing things that are undreamed of. And it's been my distinct pleasure to get to know so many of them. And I wanna to get to know a lot more of you guys in the future when we do more of these things. So with that said, here's what happened. Now this is one of the coolest things you're ever gonna see. Yesterday, I saw a black man mauled by a dog. His dog 
And uh, he volunteered like, for it. Though. He volunteered. This is like Brown versus Board of Education all these years later. And this is one of the culprits here. Y'all are wondering. Look, I'm just going to step back for a minute. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So tell everybody about what you do. It, was it Canine Fortress? Or Fortress Canine. Fortress Canine. I yep. got that backwards. So check out that YouTube channel, y'all. This is some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen. What do we got here? So this is, well, this is Punisher Mel Malinois, and the, the company that makes this helmet is called uh, Canine Helm. And I love their helmets. It fits my dogs really, really well. Uh, but they and they have a hearing protection option that you can snap in over their ears uh, to give them ear protection But they didn't have any active hearing protection and another helmet company came out and they had an active hearing protection But their helmet doesn't fit my dogs very well So I was like well, how do we take these this concept and put it on this helmet? And so Ed Lamb helped uh, he created the uh, the base here and 3d printed it and then it mounts into the helmet and so we're going to be uh, playing around with the design just a little bit and getting it set up where we can uh, potentially sell these so that you can actually mount the active hearing protection on the helmet the purpose of this is so for your average person it's somewhat minimal right? yeah um i may use something like this if i was going to be tracking in, in really dense brush right things like that to protect their eyes <clears throat> these are a little more streamlined than something like rex Specs, which is another eye protection but it sticks off their head a little more but when um, you're talking police tactical type work, the helmet protects the dog's head. This is a one-way radio, so obviously the dog's not talking back to me, but I can talk to the dog. Give commands, huh? So, and then you can run things like Mohawk cameras on the top of the helmet here, which Wi-Fi signal back to like an iPad. And so I can send a dog into a building with the radio, direct him which way I want him to go, which rooms I want him to check. And I'm watching live on the camera as he's moving through. And, uh, and then I can either recall him back out to me or I can send him in to deploy on somebody. So that's the this, uh, purpose of this setup overall. And besides that, it's just really cool and fun to play with. Well, we got some really cool footage of all the other stuff going on right now, but I can't help but think this dog looks like Snoopy right now. <laughs> I'm waiting for Woodstock to come out of the, you know, looking like a red oh, bear yeah. in the whole nine yards. Isn't it? I'm, a, I'm afraid to, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid to see what Snoopy's gonna do to me if he says the wrong thing. But I, honestly, these dogs are extraordinary. Check out what they're doing over there, y'all. We got a lot of cool footage about all the incredible things these dogs can do when they're under the hands of the right trainer. So hey, be sure to check them out. <laughs> we pumped the water from there to here. Filled this up in about, I don't know, three, four days. We took water from there to here, filled this up, and this set filled for at least a year or so, because most of it was shade. Uh, and then last year was when there were all the water levels dropped because we didn't have any rain filling. So the rain from here, would run across there's a berm that comes all the way across and that would fill that pond and then there's a berm there that would funnel that pond also well i mean you've got to maintain grade it's very slow very light slope here there's a lot of dirt that's going to come out of here if you grade all that down and that whole pond down comes around all right y'all over here in this tent they're doing so hopefully you can see us everybody knows who this is justin you brought out your baby and i ain't talking about this dog either so what are we looking at, brother? Lesson three. Well, this is He's my first number one you grain mill, my first prototype. But I've had the idea in my head for 15, 20 years, years and finally got it put together. And I hadn't been working on it that whole time, just dreaming about it and kind of getting it straight in my head how I want it. All right. This is it. It's been grinding cornmeal. Grits. Real nice. I'm tickled to death with how it's operating. It's met all my expectations. This is number one. Next is going to be two and three. And everybody in the great grandmother is in like a bidding war trying to get him to sell this thing, but I don't think it's going anywhere. So y'all know where to find Justin. Why don't you tell them all the places they can find him? You can find me on Instagram, Metcalf Meals, my YouTube channel, Metcalf Meals. Uh, various festivals around here and there. Y'all know where to find him at this point. If you haven't found him, you want to check it out. I don't know what else to say, y'all. Check out Justin, Matt Cat Mills, and all the other people we're going to list down below, y'all. There's a reason I'm telling y'all this. We want to know these people. All right? I'm with a guy I met up there in Missouri, and he is doing astonishing things. We spent a fair amount last night. I wish I could spend a whole lot of time talking to him. But he's got also a YouTube channel, folks. You're going to want to check it out because he's combining large-scale farming with permaculture, and he is about to kick off some extraordinary things. I don't know if he wants to get that 
kicked off right now, but you want to be on the front end of knowing what he's doing. And it's, believe me, y'all, it's astonishing. This is Andrew at Tabletop Farms up in Missouri. Why don't you tell them what you're doing right now? Maybe not tell them everything that sure. you plan on doing, but what are you doing right now? Well, right now we are running, we manage about a thousand acres up in Northwest Missouri, uh, Tabletop Farms, and just got the YouTube page started oh, about a month or two ago after talking to Billy up in Missouri and um, really starting, we do large scale agriculture as far as cow calf operation, um, market gardening, um, all organically. But we're really gonna transition that into doing more uh, permaculture like food forest, like the swale we got behind us, but triple, quadruple that size in, in some instances. So, and really incorporating that into um, more agriculture where we can scale it down, but scale it way up too. He's got some extraordinary, he's giving you just a small snippet of what we talked about last night. And it's funny because when we come, he pulls me off to the side and I'm, we're not gonna tell him what we talked no, about. No, no, yeah. But he brought up, um, he brought up something that he plans on doing. But on the same token, Michelle and I were talking about doing, and folks, it's gonna be paradigm changing when it's all said and done. Now that's gonna be a little ways off and I know we're kind of teasing everybody right now, but what he's gonna be able to do at his place and even to a certain extent, create something of a uh, demonstration site. Absolutely. This swale you see right here behind us, he is going to do it in an extraordinary way that is probably almost never seen in the United States at his place. And we're hoping to have a little hand on that and help out in some any kind of way we can. So the beauty about going to festivals like this is that you come across people like Andrew, you come across so many different people who are doing so many astonishing and extraordinary things mm -hmm and you're able to find maybe collaborations with them or just exchange ideas because there was something I learned from him last time regarding cattle that I didn't know. So it's little things like that and sometimes big things also. So remember, check him out at Tabletop Farms. You wanna go over there and subscribe right now because I'm telling you, he's an astonishing guy. His family's awesome and they're all out here. You guys are camping out here yeah, right now, yeah, right? Yep, camping the last two nights with over here. All right, so how can they find you and what you're doing? Tabletop Farms um, on YouTube, um, Tabletop Farms Mo uh, on our website. So that's where we'll be at. You can contact us through that and we're uh, trying to get a video up there about every other day, so. And we're linking it down below, y'all. So go check them out. You'll be glad you did. This, of course, you remember this little one in the last one and she hit it out of the park. And of course, this is Chris and Tina, the friends of mine. I'm gonna tell you briefly how special they are to me. More than about a year ago, we had done a class in another place, we did a pig processing. And I was having a bad time, bad little period in my life, and I was seriously thinking about giving up YouTube and all of that stuff. And literally at the time it was unfolding, she had my number and sent me this text of Chris doing a pig processing of his own. Not only that, but he was showing others how to do it. And it was so moving to me that honestly, it made me think, it made me rethink a lot about my life. And I came home, told Michelle all about it. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This whole thing was falling apart, at least in my brain. I was done with it. And I was literally ready to go into the dustbin. And then out of nowhere, the good Lord puts them in my path. Well, they're astonishing people. And you've already seen what this little one here is already doing where she knows her flowers, she knows her plants. And she was, and she's awesome. She's sweet. And she gave me a big hug too. So uh, I guess I'm Uncle Billy to a lot of people out there. <laughs> So uh, why don't y'all tell everybody what you're doing because they're doing enormous things and you got to check out their YouTube channel, sure. which is, let, let's tell them where your YouTube channel it's can be found. Honeysuckle Farm TN uh, is our YouTube channel. And uh, we are Honeysuckle Farms located here in Tennessee. So I know it's a real creative name for our channel. But yeah, that uh, we are fairly new to the industry of homesteading, just been in it a couple of years. And with that, we're trying to build up our farm and our homestead and doing all these things and trying to become more self-reliant and the uh, very first farm festival that I ever had a chance to attend was that Back to the Land Festival that you were at uh, more than a year ago now. And we got hands-on pig butchering that very first night. And I thought, okay, I was, I was fish on. And you know, you're know, an army guy too. See one, do one, teach one, right? right? So I saw one and the next day we were doing hands-on on the second half. So he said, guess what I gotta do now when I get home? Called up some friends. Hey, we're gonna be butchering a pig and I'd love to teach you how to butcher it. I'm like, you sure? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna teach this one now because that's the way it'll cement it into our head and uh, use your technique that you taught us. 
and just were able to teach other people. And, you know, since then we've taught a, a bunch of classes out of our homestead on butchering pigs. And it's, it has been incredible. We've just changed the way we raise our pigs, keeping them in the wood line and feeding them leftovers from places that we've got for free and doing all those things. So the putting into practice of the things that we can learn and see on your channel and that we've learned from going to the live events, that's been what's allowed us to kind of have some success in our farm. And our farm, we're kind of going for a real round robin thing. You know, I meet a lot of people in the industry here who come to these festivals and, um, you know, I'm, I'm chiefly a gardener or the chicken man or the goat person or sure. that. And so what do we have on ours? Well, we have uh, about 3,000 square foot garden that Tina's done. We have raised bed gardens on top of the 3,000 foot garden. We've got, uh, we had a hoop house until a high wind destroyed that. Now we've got a small greenhouse, but we're working on our subterranean greenhouse. Stay tuned on our channel and watch that under construction. Uh, and so we've got all that. We've got pigs, we've got goats, we've got chickens for layers, chickens for meat, and we're running Dexter cattle. And uh, it's a great homestead breed of cattle. Allows us to do some home butchering there too because of its size. As well as the milk. Because the great yes. thing about Dexter cows for milking is whereas you have one of these huge you know, Swiss dairy cows, you're going to get a couple gallons a day. A Dexter cow, you get half gallon to a gallon a day, which is perfect for our size family. It's still allow enough milk to drink, to make cheese, to make butter. So it's good for a small homestead. And what we don't consume then goes right back into always be composting and feeds our pigs. Bam. And That's it right. does it. So everything we have feeds another thing in our farm. We don't waste food at our house at all. We just recycle it into future food. That's Bacon what I'm talking seeds. about. Yeah, this is... Bacon seeds. Y'all, this is exactly what I'm talking about. They're, they're off and running. And typically when a person does so many things right out of the gates, and of course he's former army, so you know, he, there's no way he's gonna mess that up. <laughs> but he wears a lot of other hats. And we're gonna talk about that in the future and another thing altogether, possibly a live stream. And you're gonna be glad you tuned in. So absolutely, positively, subscribe to this channel. You're gonna be glad you did. Now, if anybody didn't catch where it was, look down below. We're gonna list it there, so you've got to find them. Thank you so much, y'all. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, you guys. Hi, William! <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been such a joy. I'm so glad you got to check out some of those other YouTube channels. Remember, also check out Living Free in Tennessee, but also, y'all, you gotta go check out Special Operations Equipment, my friend John over there, and allowing us the opportunity to, to take his place, which is by the way, a commercial structure, a residential structure, a lot of people make their living out of this place and to turn it into something that is truly special. And folks, it's gonna just grow and grow and grow and every single self-reliance festival is gonna have another iteration of something big that benefits everybody in this community. And by the way, y'all, just so you know, right there's the other spillway I was talking about. So if it gets high enough, it's gonna hit that spillway right down there and then down to the pond in the distance over there. Look, y'all, just really, really cool design. All right, remember, you need comfort. You need bone sauce. Anything we have, check the description box down below, y'all. Till next time, this is Billy. Not at Perma, per, Perma Pastures Farm, but always. Permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.